Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We are reading in the book of Exodus. We are ready to read Exodus chapter 32. Now you may remember in Exodus chapter 31, we had the Sabbath law handed down from God. And I'm going to read you this last verse here. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, now that's when God was done speaking with Moses, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Now those are the tablets that we associate as being the Ten Commandments, those tablets. Now we're ready to read chapter 32. And I am reading from the Amplified Bible. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, they gathered together before Aaron and said to him, Come, make us a God who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Now a note here on where they say, Make us a God. It actually is gods. It's actually Elohim in the Hebrew, a plural Hebrew form used most often to refer to the true God. It can also mean gods because it is a plural. It is a plural word. It does mean gods, which is an option here. But the account of the golden calf incident implies that the people wanted a single idol, assuming that they had just one idol in mind. It may be that the Israelites were demanding an idol representing God or Elohim himself. And I believe from the way this reads that it sounds like that's what they were actually trying to do was make a representation of God, making an idol out of him. And that's very, that also is very insulting because our God is more than any little statue or anything like that would ever be. So Aaron replied to them, Take off the gold rings that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took the gold from their hands and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made it into a molten calf. Now this calf, let's see... um, We have a note here on this. It says the selection of a calf god was probably inspired by the Egyptian bull god, um, Hapus or Apis, hard to say, believed to be a living manifestation of the Egyptian god, Ta. This is another thing that would be very insulting if that is the case. Now, it's hard for us to know for sure why they chose this particular shape. Nonetheless, Aaron made it into a molten calf, meaning they melted everything down and they formed a calf shape. And they said, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now notice, this is why I say I believe that they thought they were making an idol of actual God. Now, perhaps I'm wrong, but... That's the way this reads sometimes when I read this. Other times it sounds like they're just really mistaken and they're not giving God his credit and his due. Sometimes when I read this, I'm like, I I think that they think they're making an idol of God or to God. But he's already told them, or at least I, I think he's already told them that he doesn't want that. Nonetheless, we're going to continue on. Now, when Aaron saw the molten calf, He built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. Again, I believe that they thought they were making a representation of God. Why they would make it in the form of a calf again probably does reflect to something from Egypt. So they got up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings Then the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to play. And this they have a a note here in brackets, shamefully without moral restraint. So they were playing immorally. I think one translation may talk about dancing and stuff. And there may have been more to it than that. And I don't want to get into all those types of immoral details, but there may have been. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, for your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molten calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are a stiff-necked, stubborn, rebellious people. Now therefore, let me alone and do not interfere, so that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them, and I will make of you, your descendants, a great nation. Notice that God was ready to be rid of them. I mean, here they had, they had totally gone against what he had told them to this point, and they, they were totally acting like this idol was him, like this idol had brought them up out of Egypt. But Moses appeased and entreated the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say with evil intent their God brought them out to kill them in the mountains and destroy them from the face of the earth? Turn away from your burning anger and change your mind about harming your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Jacob, your servants to whom you swore an oath by yourself and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens and all this land of which I have spoken, I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord changed his mind about the harm which he had said he would do to his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets that were written on both sides. They were written on one side and on the other. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. Now when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a sound of battle in the camp. But Moses said, It is not the sound of the cry of victory, nor is it the sound of the cry of defeat. But I hear the sound of singing. And as soon as he approached the camp and he saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned, and he threw the tablets from his hands and smashed them at the foot of the mountain. Then Moses took the calf they had made and burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the surface of the water and made the Israelites drink it. Now, this is some this is some anger here, okay? And he's making them drink the dust of this, the powder. Obviously not enough to kill them, but still. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin on them? Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself, that they are prone to evil. For they said to me, Make us a God who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. I said to them, Let whoever has gold jewelry take it off. So they gave it to me. Then I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Notice Aaron's willing to take a little bit of uh, credit or blame here, but he's not willing to take all the blame. He's like, um, um, they gave me jewelry, and I just I like threw it in the fire, and this calf just came out. Now notice before, when we read earlier, he crafted, you know, he crafted a mold for this molten calf. You know, he did this by hand. He made this. All right. So. But he's not willing to go and take all that blame. He doesn't want that. Now, when Moses saw that the people were out of control for Aaron had let them get out of control to the point of being an object of mockery among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi, the priestly tribe, gathered together to him. He said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Every man strap his sword on his thigh and go back and forth from gate to gate throughout the camp. 
And every man kill his brother, and every man his friend, and every man his neighbor, all who are continuing to do this pagan worship. And we don't know all the details of what they are doing, but it was not morally good stuff. So, so in other words, anyone you find practicing and doing these things. So the sons of Levi did as Moses instructed. And about 3,000 men of the people of Israel were killed that day. Then Moses said to the Levites, Dedicate yourselves today to the Lord, for each man has been against his own son and his own brother in his attempt to escape execution, so that he may restore and bestow his blessing on you this day. Then the next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin. Now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin against you and have made themselves a god of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, please blot me out of your book, which you have written, kill me. In other words, he's saying, the way this reads is a little awkward. He says, if you will forgive them their sin, basically. But if you will not forgive them, then blot me out of your book as well. In other words, kill me, get rid of me too. But the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will block him out of my book, not you. But now, go, lead the people to the place where I have told you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. So the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they had done with the calf which Aaron had made for them. Now that is the end of chapter 32. One thing to note about this angel here. In verse, let's see, verse 34, where it says, Behold, my angel shall go before you. There is a note that angel has been capital, capitalized here to reflect the likelihood that it is God appearing in a visible form. And a lot of people say that this is the Lord, this is Jesus Christ appearing as the angel of God, the angel of the Lord. I just want to mention that because there are other occurrences throughout the Old Testament where we believe the angel of the Lord or the captain of God's armies and different references like that are actually probably Jesus the Lord. That is the end of chapter 32 of the book of Exodus. I want to thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.